Eh, buenas tardes con todos, chicos. Eh, y agradecerles a todos por su asistencia el día de hoy en nuestra actividad. Como ya han podido estar en algunas anteriores, eh, pues ya saben más o menos cómo trata eh, la dinámica. Debemos nosotros mantener el micrófono apagado si no vamos a hacer ninguna pregunta o participar para evitar que pues, este sonido interrumpa al ponente. Si desean hacer preguntas, pueden eh, usar la manito que se encuentra al lado de la parte de participantes, abajo van a encontrar una manito de color azul, o en tal caso, pues pueden escribir en el chat. Y al finalizar toda la presentación, haremos una ronda de preguntas con la ponente. La ponencia va a ser enteramente en inglés, ya que nuestra ponente maneja ese idioma, no, no maneja el español. Y eh, pues les pido toda su predisposición, todos sus ánimos y ganas por aprender de pues esta NMO que tenemos para poder realizar un intercambio que es Macedonia del Norte. Eh, nosotros consideramos como Leos que es muy importante promover estas NMOs que usualmente no son eh, pues muy conocidas para que ustedes se animen a realizar su intercambio en estas, ¿no? Y bueno, ahora le voy a dar el pase a mi compañera Alice Iscaliti, que es la Leo Out de José Mucho. Buenas tardes a todos chicos, muchas gracias Eli. Bueno, ya después de estas pautas generales, creo que ya podemos empezar con la presentación, así que voy a presentar a la ponente. Eh, la voy a presentar primero en español y luego en inglés para que ella sepa que ya puede empezar, ¿sí? Entonces el día de hoy tenemos a Mina, quien es la vicepresidenta por intercambios en MMSA. Macedonia y está en cuarto año de la Universidad de San Cirilo y Methodius in Skopje, Macedonia. So, de eso lo voy a, perdón, ahora la voy a presentar en, en inglés para que ella pueda empezar. Uh, so, good afternoon everyone. Today we are going uh, to have the presentation of uh, Macedonia. Uh, today uh, is going we is going to present uh, her country, Mina who is the Vice President for Exchanges in MMSA Macedonia. And she is in the fourth year um, in the University of San Cyril and Methodius in Skopje, Macedonia, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mina, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank you for inviting me. And it is my pleasure to present to you about, about our beautiful country. So I will talk about um, yes or no behavior, or basically how, uh, what is normal? How do we behave in Macedonia? Maybe it's different than in your country because they're, they are um, completely different cultures. But um, I really hope that you will like it and feel free to um, ask me anything, uh, interrupt me in the middle of presentation, like don't be afraid, don't be shy, and I will try to answer all of your questions afterwards. So I will start uh, with the over overview of my presentation. I will talk about uh, Macedonia, its location, something about geography, demogra demography, linguistic affiliation. It will be really short and then I will uh, put accent on social norms, social etiquette, what to do and what not to do. So uh, Macedonia is a landlocked nation. It is located in the, in the southern eastern Europe uh, at the Balkan Peninsula and the current border runs along mountain change that, chains that separate the Republic of Macedonia from Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, Kosovo, and Serbia. Uh, Macedonia is a really small country uh, with its total area of 20, around 25,000 kilometers square. And the country consists mostly of, sorry, um, Excuse me. Uh, there are a lot of mountains in the country and uh, flat river valleys, as well as several several lakes in Macedonia. 
Okay. Uh, demography. In the 2019, the population was a, around uh, 2 million people, and it mostly consists of Macedonians, around 70%, and uh, there are uh, other ethnicities as well, such as Albanian, Turkish, and some smaller groups of uh, Gypsies, Serbs, a Romanians, and others. In Macedonia, we speak, uh, there are two official languages, Macedonian and Albanian as well. Macedonian language is in a South Slavic language group, and it's uh, really similar to Bulgarian and Serbian. However, today, uh, young Macedonian speakers are fluent in English, they have no problem talking in English, and um, that means that if you need anything uh, in Macedonia, you can ask younger people and they will be uh, always uh, able to help foreigners to get around or uh, answer your questions if you have them. Something about religion. So the major religions in Macedonia um, are Orthodox Christianity with more than 65% people, as well as Islam with small groups of Catholics, Protestants, and atheists as well. Uh, mostly our rituals take place at the church, which you can see an exa example uh, on the picture on the picture below. And uh, the most important holidays for Christians are Christmas and Easter, and for Muslims, they are Ramadan and Quran Bayram. Currency that we use in Macedonia is Macedonian dinner. Uh, here on the picture, you can see how it looks like. Um, and also on the left side of the slide, I've written some, uh, I've written how would it be if you're exchanging money, for example, from US uh, dollars to Macedonian dinners, as well as from euros or British pounds. And also I wrote uh, a really important tip that is do not change a lot of money at the airport because um, they will charge you more than if you exchange it in the city, city center or anywhere in the city. Uh, there are a lot of festivals in Macedonia uh, and Macedonia really has some uh, special customs and traditions. Uh, I just put here some of the, some of them because I didn't have a lot of time to talk about all of them. Uh, there is D Fest on the left, which is a music summer festival, and usually all of our incomings um, they are coming in the summer months, so they all of them uh, went to that fest. Um, there is Independence Day, which is celebrated on eighth of September every year. We have Ohrid Summer Festival, which is a summer festival uh, organized at our beautiful Lake Ohrid, which is uh, one of the most famous festivals in Macedonia. And there is this special Galicznik wedding festival where you have like a lot of people, a lot of uh, couples uh, marrying at the same time at the mountain village of Galicznik. Social norms in Macedonia. Uh, sorry. Uh, so basically how we greet, uh, the most common greeting between two strangers is a firm head handshake. And uh, it is always good to keep eye contact between them. Uh, however, between two friends or two closer friends, uh, there may be a hug, or we usually kiss each other on the cheeks. Um, it is important to know that Muslim men or women may, maybe may not prefer to make physical contact with the members of the opposite gender. And with them, it is best to greet him or her verbally and let them choose to extend their hand first. Um, the common verbal greetings, uh, such as, for example, good morning is um, said dobro utro. Dobar den for good day and dobro večer for good evening. But you will learn that when you come to Macedonia, so don't, um, I don't want to put pressure 
when you're to learn it before. Uh, about public behavior. So public displays of affection, such as, um, for example, love, anger, any, any emotion, uh, depends on the situation and the location. Meaning that, for example, in the uh, city center, they are not very common, but they will be acceptable. No one will do anything about it. So you can display any affection in the public. Um, an acceptable distance when speaking to someone would be, for example, an outstretched arm uh, that is just barely touching the other person with the tips of the fingers. And if you are with a close friend, the distance can be shorter, of course. You can touch them, uh, laugh with them, whatever. It varies according to the person you're speaking to. Um, regular eye contact is necessary, as I said, for, because maybe if you don't keep eye contact, it might be considered a sign that you don't respect the person. So we don't want to do that. Gestures depend on the individual. We, as Macedonians, we usually use them a lot. Some people do, some people don't, but it is very common to use gestures. Facial expressions are standard, like those found in the Western countries. And I have a slide about that on the next page, I think. Uh, tone of voice would be moderate and people tend to be quiet, indirect, talking around the problem or suggestion. So when they, uh, when they have a problem or uh, they don't know how to tell you something, they may be quiet. But um, I can tell you that Macedonians are really loud people and they love to party a lot and they usually are very very loud so that won't be a problem of course if you are loud as well no one will tell, will tell you anything um, if you meet someone for the first time and you want to make a good impressions there are some topics that uh, you can discuss with them that is about for example about your family about where you're coming from um, what are you studying? What are you doing? For example, about your hobbies, anything that is, um, they don't want to know, for example, a lot of details about you, but um, anything about your family and work that you are, uh, that you feel good to tell something, to tell someone something about that. Common gestures are really, I think you know all of them. However, I put some pictures, so uh, I will explain them as well. On the upper picture on the right, that is like the come here sign, meaning this, and it is used to tell somebody to come over. Um, the okay sign or sign that uh, indicates satisfaction, thumbs up that everything is okay. Um, for example, if uh, generally throughout our country, shaking one's head left to right like this means no. Uh, and people may all also indicate refusal or disagreement by waving their index finger left to right like this. And instead of saying a verbal no, Macedonians sometimes click their tongue and shake, shake their head slightly and it looks like this. That means no as well. <laughs> um, I put here something funny like the middle finger, but you all know that it has the same root connotation in North Macedonia as well as in English speaking countries. And also people may use their fingers to point to something. It is all very common to point some location with your finger like this, but it's kind of rude to use it, for example, at a faculty or to um, to use your finger to point to some person, to people. So don't use that for people, only for um, explaining where to go or for some location. Something about dress, punctuality and formality. This is only for your internship at the university hospital. So at work, uh, Macedonians tend to be less formal in the summertime. So in summer months, they are less formal and more formal and conservative in, the, in winter. At the hospital, you should not be wear, wearing shorts, um, skirt that are, skirts that are above knees and t-shirts with big cleavage as well, because it is considered rude. However, outside the hospital, you can wear whatever you like. Um, your colleagues 
should be always addressed by, uh, their, by the first name, supervisors with uh, Mr. or Mrs. and then their last name. Um, it is very known, I don't know whether you know it, but it is very known that Macedonians have quite a relaxed view of time. And for us, it is common to be late or our events to, for example, run over time. However, we would really like to, we would be, uh, we want to tell you that this does not mean that you should be late for your internship and it uh, will, mean a lot to us if you can come on time, not to us only, but to our mentors as well. And also the deadlines should be well respected. So in Macedonia, there is uh, families means a lot in Macedonia. It has a huge meaning and our culture is very family oriented. For example, the extended family members are very involved with people's daily lives as Typically, for example, all, all generation, generations live together in one household. Um, this household structure eases the financial pressure on all the members of the family, and it allows uh, grandparents to help raise the youngest generation. Age is highly regarded, and the older family members have significant authority over younger generations. And traditionally, family dynamics were patriarchal with the oldest male, usually the grandfather of the house, holding the most decision-making power. However, today, family decisions are much more consensus-based and we have like different look at this um, age and authority thing. Some families may also be split apart as the poor economic climate of North Macedonia has prompted them to seek work in foreign countries to provide for the others. However, generally people still maintain um, good connections with them. So I will start now about social etiquette, um, basic etiquette when dining, when visiting, etc. So it is expected that people act more formal and respectful around the elders. elders and for example, one would refrain from swearing or telling rude jokes about, uh, around the older people, especially grandparents, they hate it. <laughs> um, also, there is a common, uh, it, this one is really funny, there is a common belief that if you leave two windows open in a room, the wind passes through a room, it will cause people to get sick. And we call this belief promaya. It's really funny. Always when you're sick, uh, the grandparents would tell, oh, it must be because of Proma, yeah? but it's never because of that. Um, Macedonians generally stay up quite late and may socialize into the uh, later hours of the night. So we are really friendly and party people. And it is uh, not necessary to tip restaurants or service people in Macedonia, for example. Uh, when visiting, Macedonian family members and close friends visit each other's homes very regularly, a lot, usually happening, and it usually happens unannounced, for example, or unplanned. They, not, um, they are not invited or they tell us that they are coming, they just come. Uh, however, some people may have concerns about uh, that and they would be, they will expect for you, for example, to announce yourself when coming. And um, it is important because of that to give advance notice of your visit. So your Macedonian counterparts have time to prepare for your arrival. Uh, when coming to a Macedonian household, it, is, um, it would be nice if you can take off your shoes before entering someone's home. And everyone should usually stand up to meet and greet each other and those who arrive. Um, if everyone is already seated to it, when you enter a room, take the time to shake hands with all people individually. That means a lot. Expect always tea or coffee to be offered when at someone's house. And you should uh, accept those re refreshments, even if you do not drink them at all. And doing so, it fa facilitates discussion. While if you refuse someone's offer, it can be interpreted as rude. So even if you don't want to drink it, you just um, accept what they are giving to you and say thank you. That would be enough. 
you don't have to drink it. Um, it also, it is um, very, it's important to not start drinking because before your host does, because uh, they will find it very rude. And if a Macedonian has invited you to their house for a meal, um, they rarely, rarely expect uh, visitors to contribute to the food. It is expected the invitation that it is expected that the invitation involves their offer to provide everything to you, so you don't have to bring anything or uh, to be included in making the food or anything. You just come and eat and drink. <laughs> um, about eating, so the lunch is the main meal of the day in Macedonia, and it is eaten at around 2 p.m. Dinner is eaten eaten later after an afternoon siesta. If you're eating at someone's house or restaurant, plan to be there for at least two hours. And the um, meals are often prolonged because people socialize. As I said, we are very friendly and we can be, for example, at lunch for three or four hours. Also expect to be offered more servings that, than you are prepared to eat. You may have to politely insist that you are full, but it's very difficult in Macedonia. They always um, make you eat stuff even if you're not hungry. So sometimes uh, Macedonians may serve meze instead of a full meal. This is like a selection of small dishes that accompany alcoholic drinks. And for example, salad is meant to be the accompaniment to hard spirits such as rakia. Muslim Macedonians, this is important to remember, they may not consume, consume alcohol or pork in accordance with their Islamic principles. So uh, as I mentioned before, rakia is a fruit brandy that is a traditional and very popular drink in Macedonia. And the common toast that we make with rakia is uh, called nazdravie, and it means for your health. All of our, our uh, incomings love Drakia and they really had a good time drinking Drakia. Um, so with dining out, um, friends usually discuss the bill prior to paying and they agree as to whether everyone will pay for themselves or, or one of them will pay. And if someone specifically invites you to the dinner, they may want to pay for all of you, so he or she will pay for everyone. When giving gifts, there are not many strong customs surrounding gift giving in Macedonia, and people may prefer to open gifts in private in Macedonia or uh, in front of the given in or in front given only when no other people are watching, so they want to keep things private. Um, someone who is financially strugg struggling, for example, can feel embarrassed if given a very expensive gift and they may feel unable to uh, reciprocate or match their gesture. So they may not accept that very expensive gift. Also, when giving flowers to someone, um, you should be sure that the bouquet counts to another number of flowers, for example, like Three, uh, three roses, one, five, seven, etc. because even numbers of flowers in Macedonia are given at the funerals. So nobody wants to have an uh, even number of flowers. And also avoid giving pork or alcohol-based products to Muslim Macedonians because they don't use it, eat it. Um, so I have like um, some things that you, should do an overview. So uh, Macedonian may not always tell you when they have been insulted or what has upset them, but they may instead become cold towards you or difficult to contact. And if you notice something like this or realize you have offended them, um, you should make sure uh, to try to make amends as soon as possible. Open apologize and sincere uh, remorse are generally accepted and respected. However, uh, reluctance to do so can be interpreted as a sign of arrogance and further uh, jeopardize a relationship. So you should always uh, apologize. And 
I think everything will be fine after that. Also, you should expect Macedonians to talk about uh, politics quite openly. And I will say that probably over 90% of Macedonian population are not experts in politics. However, there is no doubt that 100% of them are pretty sure that they are. And if you want to act like a true Macedonian, then make sure to talk a lot about the politics of the country. If you are not familiar with it, like no worries, they have no idea what they're talking about as well. Um, also, um, you should make an effort to ask about the Macedonian's family when developing a friendship. And um, the family members are arguably the most important part of their lives and they always talk about their family. So that is the perfect to topic for talking what you should not do. So uh, you should avoid provoking conversations about Macedonian Albanian, Macedonian Greek or Macedonian Bulgarian relations because you cannot presume a person's position on these affairs. And um, that should be really, uh, you should be really avoiding that. It's connected to politics and they have all different opinions. So if you tell anything about that, they, you may, um, how do you say it? You may uh, provoke them or offend them, and that is not what we want. So it's best to not talk about that. Also, um, you shouldn't, you should not criticize or insult North Macedonia as a country, because the Macedonian people are very proud and some often find themselves in the position of defending their country against hostile neighboring opinions, and you may end up arguing as well. Also, um, avoid using the name form, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia to refer to Macedonia. Many Macedonians see it as a Fox label forced upon them to suppress their identity and can be seriously upset and offended by its usage. So it's best to just say Macedonia or North Macedonia but they don't even like the North Macedonia as well. So maybe the best one to uh, tell is Macedonia. So that would be it for this presentation about uh, culture, Macedonian culture and yes or no behavior. And I also have another presentation about social program. And I know it isn't planned for uh, this meeting, but I can present that one as well if you want to see it. A minute. I, I think that you you can do it. Yeah, they tell me it's, it's okay to it, to it will be okay. presentation. Can you say it again? Because I didn't hear you. That it will be okay that you present your okay. Yes, no. BDT, I think it is. I have that presentation somewhere here. And I think it would be interesting for your students to see it because it's uh, about social program. And I really like that presentation as well. I just need to find it. It's really short. It's not more than 10 minutes, I think. If we have time, if, if we don't, then we, we can start asking questions and answering them. Uh, well, I think that, that maybe um, to the participants can write their questions in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mina, you can uh, search your social program presentation. So mm -hmm. don't be shy. I have to find it on my Google Drive. Thank you. 
Mina, someone wrote me a question. Okay. Uh, he said, are people in Macedonia very traditional? Is religion important in your country? Okay. Is that it? Sorry? That is the whole question, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, newer generations of people um, do not, they are not really traditional as, as before and they do not take religion very seriously. For example, me and my peers, uh, we don't take it very seriously. So the religion in Macedonia is not that important. They are not like fanatics. Okay. I was just telling about religion so you can have an impression um, about the religion in Macedonia. There are quite like, there, there are Christians, there, there are Muslims and we have quite, um, we're open-minded people. So we accept all of the religions. Okay, thank you. I think that someone wrote a question, like, is there a Doctor's Day? I think that it's like international. If you celebrate a, a, a day for commemorate doctors. Well, honestly, I don't know about that. <laughs> Or do you worry? We have a day. We for don't what? celebrate something no? like that. Oh. Oh, there is like, um, I don't know how to explain it. We have uh, something called Slava, and it's uh, like a day when you celebrate some saint. And uh, there are two saints that are considered uh, doctors in our Christian religion, so we celebrate them. Oh, we celebrate saints too here. Yeah, we celebrate them. We call that Slava. And we usually invite a lot of guests. <laughs> we make like a party. Oh, I can see the questions here. Oh, you can answer it if, if yeah, you I can want. answer it. Okay. Uh, weddings are big events in Macedonia. Do you have any special custom in that occasion? So um, usually our weddings, like they're huge events when you invite like uh, 100 or 200 people even. And um, they have some special customs, but they are not uh, really popular these days. So we basically go to church. Um, you marry there, marry each other there. And then you go to a restaurant, have a party there um like you dance the whole night sing that is pretty much of it the only custom uh, the only like special tradition is the one that i showed you um weddings in galichnik in that uh, mountain village and that one is very traditional some people are still doing it um but i don't really know like the whole um custom how is it going because it's really really old and um they don't do that very much very often these days i can send you like a link to a page on the internet where you can read more about that i can i, I can put that link here in the zoom meeting if you want and the next question, which are the most inappropriate topics to talk about, like taboos? Um, so taboos in Macedonia are uh, talking about, I don't know whether you think about talking in public, probably. So it's talking about um, sex in public, uh, talking about um, heterosexuals, Homosexuals, sorry, about homosexuals, about, um, for example, it, it is still taboo to talk about HIV, AIDS, 
and we don't like that at all younger people we are really against that and we are like uh, trying our best to make those uh, topics not taboo anymore but the older people find it really inappropriate so um, the in inappropriate topics depends whether you are in the um, uh, whether the people around you are younger or they're older if we're talking to younger people they don't we don't really have any taboos between ourselves do you have typical dishes in macedonia and yes i have them on the other presentation that i was uh, telling you about if i can present it you will see it and what is the actual situation in macedonia about covid 19 so um COVID-19 currently in Macedonia is, uh, the situation is really bad, like the worst since it started in March. And um, all of our professors and assistants at the clinic, they are in COVID centers. Uh, the university clinic is COVID center as well. All the intern clinics, for example, for um, dermatology, nephrology, all of them are COVID centers. And we don't even have our classes, lectures in the hospital. We do everything online. Um, currently, um, there are a lot of people dying every day. The numbers are huge. And I hope that our, everything will end up soon because like all of our doctors are um, giving, hoping that the vaccine will help us because they can even, they cannot stand it anymore. They don't have that uh, strength to, to continue uh, this work anymore because it's really, the situation is really bad. Any other questions? You can also share with me the actual situation in Peru with COVID-19. Oh, if you I, want any of your participants. Yeah, I, I was going to tell you that maybe you should, well, you could um, present your social okay. program, but uh, maybe later we can talk about what, how is Peru going with COVID? Okay. And the other questions, um, we will wait to our participants to, no to problem. write their questions. So, Okay, so I will start another presentation. I just need to share my screen. Again. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Just a second. I don't know why it's not wor working. Oh. I'm sorry. Sorry for waiting. I hope it will work now. No, don't worry.
Can you see it now? I don't know the others, but my screen has um, been I. Uh, I just see downloads and exchange for your downloads. Okay, okay, the the wrong screen. Sorry. Okay, so now it's fine. I think. Yeah. Now we can see it. Perfect. Um, so we use this presentation for another meeting when talking about our um, social program and I would really like to present this one as well because here you can see a lot of beautiful places in Macedonia as well as some traditional food and drinks. I will just skip some of the slides because maybe I already told them. So um, our uh, country nestled in the core of the Balkans uh, promises to give you a memorable exchange experience and I can tell that Skopje and Macedonia itself boast a captivating mixture of various cultures that is evident in our architecture, cuisine, cultural values and social norms as well as behavior and this multicultural tolerant aspect grants every incoming student a warm welcome with open hands and hearts and a pleasant stay to be forever remembered. Uh, on the picture below, you can see how some of our exchange students. Uh, they were visiting Canyon Matka. So about our organization, we have uh, only one currently Skopje's Core Active LC, and it is Skopje, which is also the capital of North Macedonia. Um, Skopje is a bustling capital on the track of becoming a big European metropolis. And these are the pictures of Skopje city center. Also, every incoming student that is confirmed will be placed in a Facebook group and he or she will be assigned a specific contact person to ease the transportation from the bus station or from the airport to the lodging and vice versa. About the lodging in Macedonia, uh, we usually use up until now, we used uh, student dormitories. They have been placed, uh, students have been placed at the recently renovated Parten Izobrovsky dormitory, which is conveniently placed at about 10 to 15 minutes easy walk from the clinic itself, as well as the city center. And there is there are a lot of nearby bus station stops, shops, whatever you need. Uh, the rooms have two bunk beds, which means that they are for four students maximum with shared bathroom. However, this year we are looking at several, several other options for lodging. So apartments and student flats are possible options for the exchange program for next summer because of the situation with, with COVID-19. Getting around the city. In Macedonia, I can say that it's really easy to get around the city, especially in Skopje. Uh, the city has an intrinsically developed bus transport system and getting around is fairly easy. For any student wishing to use the public transport system, there is a seasonal monthly ticket for July and August for summer months at a fee of 10 euros only and it will suffice for uh, the whole month. Also, there is a taxi service, and if that is what you need, there are a great number of taxi companies available with the average fee of half a euro per kilometer, which is pretty cheap compared to the other Balkan countries as well as European countries. And being a small city in Skopje, you can practically get anywhere by foot. And that is also my recommendation because you also get to sight see the city that way. This is the best option. It's everything is really close. Okay, so about clinical internship, I put some pictures from the hospital on the neck on the right side of the slide. Uh, the clinical clerkship will be at the university clinic Mother Teresa and it will be under the supervision of experienced mentors, of course. Each incoming uh, is expected to be frequently attending the clinical clerkship appointments. However, 
uh, I can say that uh, our professors are highly flexible and they will allow any absence for leisure time or travel. So it's up to you and your mentor to um, always communicate and tell each other whether you're coming or not and ask them before uh, whether they will allow you to go or not. Also as an NMO and uh, specifically school PT team of our NMO tend to value the student handbook that can be provided by our officers and they will expect that to be neatly filled. Um, at the hospital, you should not be wearing shorts, skirts. I told you before, uh, no t-shirts with big cleavage and outside of hospital, anything you like. And for your internship, you will need uh, scrubs if you're going to surgery and a white coat and stethoscope if you're going to, for example, cardiology, nephrology, etc. Also, you should not be late. You should respect deadlines, as I said before. And something about our social program. So this is how it looks. Uh, we will welcome you at the beginning of the, of the month. We will have one NFDP, which is National Food and Drinks Party. Um, for the weekends, we usually organize social program. And during the week, you have free time to go uh, wherever you want. How, uh, however, we are also um, there to help you if you are wondering where to go, what to see. We're always there to give you advice and also go with you together. And the pin of welcoming dinner. So, as a tradition, every year at the start of Exchange Month, we host a welcoming dinner at a traditional restaurant. It's called Corner Balatsana, where you will be able to taste the rich flavors of Macedonian cuisine. It has this amazing um, view where you can see the whole city of Skopje. Macedonian traditional drinks. So there are a lot of traditional uh, drinks, for example, mastica, uh, which is a liqueur seasoned with mastica. And it is, um, it is not very strong. We usually um, drink that with salads or when eating um, some vegetables. Uh, there is Macedonian wine and uh, Macedonia is a natural paradise for awful vineyards. And we have some very famous Macedonian wine, which you can try. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of rakias. So we have a rakia made of grapes, a rakia made of um, other uh, fruits, such as um, plums, etc. And uh, this uh, type of drinks is very strong and it should not be drink like drunk like shots but you should drink it slowly because you can drunk you can get drunk very easily and we have that we had that problem with our incomings because because they thought it should be drunk like shots and they got really really drunk one time about macedonian traditional food um there is like a lot of pastries in macedonia and they are basically our traditional food. For example, zelnik is a pastry composed of thin layers of uh, pastry filled with various combinations of uh, cheese, eggs, um, meat, like anything you can imagine, potatoes as well. Also, there is pastamalia on the uh, picture down below, which is a bake, uh, baked dough pie. Uh, in an oval shape, and it is covered with small chunks of uh, pork or chicken meat. And it is very popular to eat in Macedonia. We also have, uh, we even have a festival celebrating this um, traditional uh, food. Sales comeso is, um, is a beef or pork dish with a rich filling and tasty flavor prepared in an um, 
earthware clay pot, and it's made of smoked meat, mushrooms, tomatoes, onions, and spices. And also there is, uh, there is a bakardan on the picture below, um, which is also known as kalchamak, and it is a maize porridge made in the Balkans. And the food, this one is usually eaten for breakfast. Sarma is uh, uh, cabbage rolls with, uh, filled with meat and rice. Um, and it is also, it is always eaten in a winter. So it is a winter dish made of fermented cabbage leaves, rice and ground beef. And the most famous one is Tavce Gravce. Uh, also the most traditional dish in Macedonia. And it has an incredibly rich flavor. And it is usually prepared for a Friday lunch. So something about the capital of Macedonia, Skopje. So uh, the pool of the city is based upon its ability to instill comfort into any person who wanders it. And as many of our incomings uh, said, uh, they had a feeling of constant security and warmth during their stay in Skopje. The city center is a place where the nightlife coalesces to form an array of cafes, uh, restaurants, which all stand in the shadow of this, uh, of this amazing statue of Alexander the Great, uh, which is a monument of the historical value for, of our small country. And the marble tiled city center is adorned with numerous sculptures offering an insight into characters and scenes from the times long gone, which you can see here. So we have a lot of bridges, a lot of uh, different statues. The city center is bordered by this river on the picture. The river is called Vardar. Um, and this river particularly divides Skopje into two parts. One of the most popular and historically significant structures that is intrinsically tied to this river is the stone bridge, which you can see on this picture. And this bridge is very important because it allows passage into the opposite bank where any bypasser is immediately captivated by a whole other dimension of the character of this multifaceted city, which is the Turkish Old Bazaar. So the old bazaar offers a unique glimpse of the Turkish influence on North Macedonia. And this sprawling network of cobblestone paved streets is littered with, an, uh, with a huge number of traditional goldsmith shops, florists, donut restaurants, nargile cafes, and they are all under the captivating mixed Byzantine and Ottoman architecture. Here you can see some of the carpets, traditional carpets of Macedonia. They are handmade. And this is one of the streets at, in the Turkish Old Bazaar where you can buy baklava here or some leather jackets, etc. Overshadowing the Turkish Old Bazaar, um, put upon a hill overlooking the entire city of Skopje is located the Kale Fortress. Uh, which is a stone castle bastion uh, showed in this picture, and it is dating as far back as the 10th century. Its premises are open for tourists and a favorite leisure spot for tourists and locals alike. And uh, one of the prettiest locations of Macedonia and one that you should uh, for sure check if coming to Macedonia is Canyon Matka which is a national natural treasure and is heavily associated with, uh, uh, with our city and our nation's heritage. It is located in the outskirts of the city. So it's really near, uh, really close to Skopje, around 10 to 15 kilometers uh, near Skopje and fairly easy accessible by a bus route. Only our local officers and contact persons are in charge of organizing bus transport for the entire group of our incomings. So every year we take our incomings to the Canyon Matka. The Matka Canyon is a ravine. Uh, it is carved by the flow of the river Treska, which is shown in the picture. 
And uh, the river in the previous century was dammed with the consecutive formation of an artificial lake. The lake is bordered by sheer cliffs and lush vegetation, and it uh, offers a unique getaway from the bustle of the city. After arriving at the foot of the canyon, um, the, uh, the well-fenced trail carved in the side of the mountain leads up to a plateau uh, upon which are um, a huge number of restaurants overlooking the lake itself. And for any adventure seeking, of course, there are mono or tandem kayaks, which are rentable at a fee of four euros per hour. So at this place, you can, for example, drink your coffee while looking at the lake, take pictures, eat something, just enjoy your time at the Canyon Mark. Also, what we would like to accentuate is the Vrelo cave system, which is considered one of the most if not the deepest cave system in the world. Uh, there is available boat tour with an accompanying tour guide, uh, and it is available at a fee of five euros, and it will enable you to enter the cave system and gaze upon its innumerable stalactites, stalagmites, and two lakes. The cave is home to an array of beautiful butterflies that will leave an everlasting impression on your mind. Mountain Vodno is a locals and tourist favorite recreational spot. And this uh, kilometer high mountain is a must for any hiking enthusiasts as well as any amateur. So half, uh, halfway on the mountain is an area reserved for relaxation with numerous wooden hut, huts, restaurant, church, and the starting point of the mountain's gondola system which enables easy access to the mountain top which is here and at this top uh, at the top of the mountain is located the world's largest cross it's called the millennium cross this spot enables uh, a panoramic view of the whole city of skopje as well as the neighboring mountains and rolling hillsides and will leave you wanting for more um, we would recommend visiting the Mountaineer's Home, which has a wide variety of herbal tea brews and a whole cozy warm atmosphere, and it is located right next to the cross. Ohrid Lake, um, also the jewel of our country. Um, this city is located in the southwestern tip of the shores of the Ohrid Lake, and its distinct architectural style and rich historical value, accompanied by sheer beauty, make it a favorite spot for our incoming, for sure. Um, the, the organizing the transportation is very easy as it is located just around 180 kilometers from the capital. And uh, an individual bus fare ticket is around 11 euros for two-way ticket. However, we always, like every year, we organize transportation to Ohrid Lake as well as the lodging. The city and adjoining lake are a World UNESCO Heritage Site, and its original ancient name, Lichnidos, signifies city of light, as you can see on this picture, or a precious stone that emits light, indicating its shining visible presence upon the lake shores at night. This one is really beautiful and a must when coming to Macedonia. Um, you are bound to fall in love with the city, with its lamp-lit cobblestone streets, lakeside restaurants, and the cafes and discos in the contemporary part as well as the fortress. Colosseum, there, is, there are antique buildings and churches that litter the old city. And that would be the end of these presentations as well. Uh, here you can see also our Instagram account. Feel free to follow it as well because we post uh, on a weekly basis something about Macedonia, some uh, experiences from the other exchange students. So maybe you can find something interesting there for you. Thank you, Mina. Well, we do. Welcome. I hope I really hope that you like this. And I really hope that I can show you just um, some of the beauties that Macedonia can offer to you. 
Yes, it was really interesting, all the details and all the information that you, you just show us. And I think that someone has write a question. And how many years do you study medicine? Yes, I saw it. I just didn't uh, get to answer it before. Um, we study six years. So medicine in Macedonia or like in the whole Balkan countries, um, it started for six years. And the last year is like internship year where you go to the clinics for a whole year. You just keep rotating the clinics, uh, surgery departments, internal medicine clinics as well. And afterwards, after these six years, you have another year of internship where you have to um, uh, take, a, it's called like a national test to get your license to become a doctor of uh, general medicine. And afterwards you go to a specialization, which can last from uh, four to five or six years, depending on your department. It's like that in Macedonia. How much money do you need to go to Macedonia? Okay, so I thought I had a slide with some basic, oh yeah. We have on our Instagram page um, a post that is only for um, basic costs in Macedonia. For example, uh, how much would be a bottle of water, um, some basic um, food. And I will tell you right now, for example, to buy a drink in grocery store, uh, half liter of water bottle would be around uh, 25 cents. So 1.25 euros. Uh, a soda would be half a euro for a uh, half a liter. And for example, a bottle of, of uh, wine, which is one liter would be around three euros, four euros, depends uh, where you go to buy it. Uh, food, uh, such as pastries and fast food is really cheap. Uh, for example, if you want to buy a slice of pizza, it is around um, 80 cents. A burger is around two euros. Um, toasts around half a euro, one euro, depending where you buy it. And if you go to um, cafe, bar, or restaurant, you will pay a little bit um, more expense, expensive. Uh, and for example, coffee in a cafe or bar would be around one euro, one and a half euro, depending uh, what type of coffee, coffee you're drinking. And alcoholic beverages such as uh, beer, beer would be one and a half euros, cocktails would be two to five euros. Also, if you go to a restaurant to eat traditional cuisine, uh, usually um, the prices are around two euros, three euros for a dish. Um, for some burgers in the restaurant, you will pay around four euros. And for international cuisine, uh, for example, pizza, eating small pizza in a restaurant would be four euros, Caesar salad, three euros. Um, if you order pasta, or Italian cuisine, it would be around five euros. And also I wrote something about souvenirs. If you're buying souvenirs, you can find them for uh, one to three euros. Uh, bus fare ticket, ticket is 10 euros. Taxi service, as I said, half a euro per kilometer. Um, we have average disco fee around three euros and cinema ticket around five euros. I hope it helps. If it's not helping, I can stop. Uh, for example, for a museum fee, you can spend, you will spend around three euros. Um, going to Matka Canyon, uh, or meaning taking a boat ride to Cave Vrevo, it would be around five euros. Um, getting kayak at Matka Canyon, four euros per hour. Uh, bus ticket to Okrit, 11 euros. Taking taxi 
or a cab from the airport to the lodging would be around 15 euros, which I think is important to mention. Uh, however, you don't have to take the cab because there is a shuttle bus from the airport to the lodging and it's uh, cheaper. It's three euros only. That would be the information I have. If you are looking for something, uh, something else, feel free to ask me. So, for example, if you are um, planning your money for Macedonia, you can we can say that um, you will have one meal covered um, in the hospital, and then you have to buy two other meals. You can spend, for example, I don't know, from from five to ten euros a day for the meals, and the other money would probably go to uh, for the social program to travel around Macedonia and to see other cities or maybe travel to other countries in Macedonia as well because a lot of our students um, travel to other Balkan countries uh, students from um, South America they usually go and have a Euro tour so they uh, may even visit uh, France, Austria, Germany any other countries in Europe. Any other questions or anything that you want to know about Macedonia? What is the thing that you should never do in Macedonia and it is normal to do in Peru. Um, honestly, I, I don't know how to answer it because um, I don't know a lot about your culture and um, the, the, how, how different it is from Macedonia. But you can tell me, for example, uh, from what I presented to you, how, how much difference is there between our two cultures? Well, I think that they don't have more questions. So, uh, about your um, your last question of you of um, how is Peru with COVID nineteen? Well, we were um, like two months ago, or maybe three, or maybe four months ago. We were not in a very good situation we didn't have like stretchers in 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 the in the icu and uh, there were people dying and it was really awful it was an awful situation but now we have like a, a everything is it's calm but it, in some places in peru we have like a, a second wave it's mm -hmm. not in every place in peru but but um, in the north of Peru, that is Piura, we have uh, a second wave of this COVID. But in Lima, in some, it's not like cities, but we call them districts. That mm -hmm. is like small cities in Lima, that is the capital of Peru. We have uh, an increase of cases of, of COVID. So, um, it's like uh, the pandemic is stable, but in any moment it, it can be uh, an in, a increase of cases of COVID-19. So uh, like in, uh, in every part of, of the world, right? So yeah. that's a, that is our situation. Uh, two weeks ago in Macedonia, it was uh, completely out of control. It was really like surprising uh, the number of people affected by COVID that were positive, uh, but now it's kind of all um, getting calm. So it's getting, it, it is being controlled, but two weeks ago, it was really difficult. We had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of friends that were positive actually. 
and yes, it's stabilizing a little, a bit. And for example, at the beginning of the pandemic in March, we had a really small number of positive cases, for example, like 20, 30, and we were all in quarantine. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't go to the uh, hospital to have our lectures. No, no one was able to go anywhere. So we were locked up. But now with um, around uh, 1,000 positive cases, we are not in quarantine, which is really um, weird, how would I say? I don't know whether it happened to you as well. Yes, we were in, in quarantine um, like five months, I think. I'm not, not really sure, but it was uh, really hard for us. Uh, we didn't go to hospitals or to the university, I, as, as you told us, uh, as we tell you, um, like you in, in Macedonia. But well, it's what we have to, we have to, to leave like this for the moment, so. And we hope that I would, everything will be fine as soon as possible. Yes. We hope in vaccine. Yes, the vaccine. <laughs> Our exchanges can happen in the summer months, we hope. Yes. Uh, well, to, uh, to finalize this activity, I would like to, uh, um, to say you thank you for uh, this presentation. I, will, uh, I don't put my camera on because I'm a disaster. So sorry for that. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm really <laughs> glad that I had this chance. And I would like to thank you again for this, uh, for the invitation, for inviting me. And feel free if you have any questions, any of you, feel free to uh, ask us on Instagram or on our mail. We will answer everything. Don't be shy. Don't like, feel free to ask us anything. Anything you need, anything you would like to know before coming to Macedonia. We are here. Ah. Thank you, Mina, again. Um, this presentation was very important for us because as I told you, we want to give information about your country. Here in Peru, some people didn't know about different countries that we have for exchanges. So we want to promote these countries and give a chance to the students to know different cultures, know different traditions, and maybe travel in the future to these countries. No, this is the objective of, of us. Course. So I hope that they Amazing. understand everything. And we really, we are really grateful with you because this was very amazing and it's an so important much. presentation for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hope to see you soon and hear from you. Yes, we, we want to make different presentations. Probably in the future we make another. Thank you. Of course. We're here. Okay, so can I leave now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. We're waiting for you in Macedonia. Thank you. Bye. Chicos, eh, buenas tardes. ¿Sí? Ahora les vamos a proyectar unos códigos.